Now, I never really fit in in high school. I would say becoming a, a recluse started in high school. And then in university, I noticed, well, among 400 other students in a classroom, that I was even more reclusive. Now, becoming a recluse is about solitary confinement. And I don't know if I've ever fully gotten to that point, but I certainly have felt like a recluse in the sense that I've never really fit in with society. And I prefer to isolate myself. If I had to choose, I would be in my place versus being in a crowd of people. And I enjoy and I thrive on being alone. So what does this mean? Well, if you are perhaps lonely, it could be the fact that you are choosing voluntarily to be a recluse. You are literally isolating yourself from the real world. And is it a bad thing? Well, only you can decide. Is this what you want? Is this how you want to live your life? You want to be by yourself? You don't want to be around other people? If you can accept that and enjoy it without any sort of mental toll on you, then maybe it's acceptable. Now, when I was in the corporate world, I was in marketing and I was a one-man show and I didn't really interact with too many other people. I preferred to be a recluse in the position and I managed to get away with it for the most part. And I kept to myself and I did that. That was just my thing. I performed better by being away from others. But the more meetings that came up, the more I realized this isn't really for me. I, I can't think clearly when I'm constantly in meetings. I need to be away. And the thing is, is can you be alone with your thoughts? Can you be by yourself? And can you handle these thoughts that go through your head? There are a lot of successful recluses out there, famous, brilliant recluses. Stanley Kubrick is a good example. He liked to live in his home uh, as a film director. He didn't really want to be out and about talking or with people. But some of his most brilliant work had come from that isolation. So he was able to handle it really, really well. Now, others are typically destructive. When they become a recluse, they might fall apart and they might just not be able to function outside of their own little world. And uh, that can be dangerous as well. But some of the most brilliant people were reclusive and that brings up the point, is it such a bad thing? Well, if you're not handling it appropriately, for instance, Maybe you have addictions and whatnot. So while you're reclusive, you are battling these addictions. Well, then that's probably a bad thing. But if you can take care of yourself in a healthy way, maybe it's possible. You see, the question is, is where do you really want to go with your pursuits, your creative pursuits? And then... If you know where you want to go, maybe being reclusive is a solution to putting out masterpieces. You see, a painter is fairly isolated when they're painting. Well, some of them like to be out in crowds painting, but a, a lot of these painters, they're isolated in their approach and their creative endeavor. They're not out and about among crowds. So it can be highly isolating. And you'll see a lot of painters who are reclusive. Now this brings about a whole host of issues like depression and all that bad stuff. Because the interactions with others are few and far between. And you have to decide, is that okay? Can I handle that? And that's what you really have to figure out. Some people just 
naturally do not fit in with others. They think a certain way. They're different in their approach. They're different in their strategies. And they simply do not connect with others on a meaningful level. And they find it difficult to build relationships. So being reclusive is a way for them to perhaps channel energies towards a creative pursuit. And what is wrong with that? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But what we are teaching everyone with social media, with corporate world, with teamwork, is that we do have to be with others. And then if we aren't with others, we are not going to fit in, and not fitting in is a bad thing. That's what we're being taught. But the best people in the world, the people who change the world, do not fit in. They don't fit in with any regime. They don't fit in with the typical standards. So we need to let people know that it's okay to not fit in. They might be on to something. Of course, there is a risk. There is a risk. You see, if you're not fitting in, there's a risk of your life being damaged. And that'll be very difficult to fix. So the question is, is what are you creating in your reclusive state? What are you doing in your reclusive state? If it is not productive, then being reclusive might be a very dangerous thing for you. It is lonely, and it can be quite sad. It can be quite difficult. But there are a number of things that I need to achieve in this world, a number of people that I need to help in this world. And I can't think of too many other ways than to be reclusive and broadcast certain ideas and concepts so that other people can enjoy them. I don't know if there's any other way. And I don't know if talking to a bunch of other people is going to allow me to create what I want. Now, I made a bunch of children's books. Uh, The amount of production volume was incredible in a span of a few short years, and that was all from reclusive activity, highly reclusive activity. For instance, I would go for weeks without really connecting with anyone. And is that such a bad thing? When you're trying to create something that's perhaps world-changing, could be world-changing, having that alone time might be exactly what you need. Solitary confinement. Is it as bad as everyone thinks it is? Well, If it's voluntary, it might not be the worst thing. It actually might be beneficial. And there's a few things to think about there. Now, this is different from a hermit. Uh, A hermit is typically reclusive for religious reasons. That's the difference between a hermit and a recluse. And, I mean... You have certain values, and you want to be a hermit based on your religion. Well, that's okay, too. I I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's the agenda of pushing connection, right? The agenda of social media creating fake connection that is maybe a concern in that there is very minimal authentic connection with social media. The real connections that I've always found are from face-to-face interactions, when you really get to know someone. And beyond that, connecting on social media is a very dark hole. This is why I don't participate on social media other than YouTube, but this is more of a broadcast mechanism to talk about real ideas, perhaps. But some of the most brilliant minds are coming from reclusive states. So I wouldn't be too down on yourself if you're in a life of 
being a recluse. I I don't think you should be too hard on yourself. I think you should actually enjoy this moment of confinement. Enjoy it, and see what you can produce. See what you can come up with. Push yourself. You might come up with some incredibly brilliant material. Material that people really care about. And what's wrong with that? I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Okay. I think that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in.